Thursday of the 29th week in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Eternal Father, through your word, you gave new life to Adam's race, transformed them into sons of light, new creatures by your saving grace. To you who stooped to sinful man, we render homage and all praise. To Father, Son, and Spirit blessed, whose gift to man is endless days. The word of the Lord is a strong shield for all who put their trust in him. As for God, his ways are perfect. The word of the Lord, purest gold. He indeed is the shield of all who make him their refuge. For who is God but the Lord, who is a rock but our God? the God who girds me with strength and makes the path safe before me. My feet you made swift as the deer's. You have made me stand firm on the heights. You have trained my hands for battle and my arms to bend the heavy bow. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The word of the Lord is a strong shield for all who put their trust in him. Your strong right hand has upheld me, Lord. You gave me your saving shield. You upheld me, trained me with care. You gave me freedom for my steps. My feet have never slipped. I pursued and overtook my foes, never turning back till they were slain. I smote them so they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You girded me with strength for battle. You made my enemies fall beneath me. You made my foes take flight. Those who hated me, I destroyed. They cried, but there was no one to save them. They cried to the Lord, but in vain. I crushed them fine as dust before the wind, trod them down like dirt in the streets. You saved me from the feuds of the people and put me at the head of the nations. People unknown to me served me. When they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreign nations came to me cringing. Foreign nations faded away. They came trembling out of their strongholds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your strong right hand has upheld me, Lord. May the living God, my Savior, be praised forever. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praised be the God who saves me, the God who gives me redress and subdues people under me. You saved me from my furious foes. You set me above my assailants. You saved me from violent men. So I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing a psalm to your name. He has given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed, for David and his sons forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord God, our strength and salvation, put in us the flame of your love, and make our love for you grow to a perfect love which reaches to our neighbor. May the living God, my Savior, be praised forever. Open my eyes, Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. A reading from the book of Esther. On the third day, Esther put on her royal garments and stood in the inner courtyard, looking toward the royal palace, while the king was seated on his royal throne in the audience chamber, facing the palace doorway. He saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard and made her welcome by extending toward her the golden staff which he held. She came up to him and touched the top of his staff. Then the king said to her, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even if it is half of my kingdom, it shall be granted you. If it please your majesty, Esther replied, come today with Haman to a banquet I have prepared. And the king ordered, Have Haman make haste to fulfill the wish of Esther. So the king and Haman went to the banquet with Queen Esther. Again, on this second day, during the drinking of the wine, the king said to Esther, Whatever you ask, Queen Esther, shall be granted you. Whatever request you make shall be honored, even for half the kingdom. Queen Esther replied, If I have found favor with you, O king, and if it pleases your majesty, I ask that my life be spared, and I beg that you spare the lives of my people. For my people and I have been delivered to destruction, slaughter, and extinction. If we were to be sold into slavery, I would remain silent, 
but as it is, the enemy will be unable to compensate for the harm done to the king. Who and where, said King Ahasuerus to Queen Esther, is the man who has dared to do this? Esther replied, The enemy oppressing us is this wicked Haman. At this, Haman was seized with dread of the king and queen. The king left the banquet in anger and went into the garden of the palace, but Haman stayed to beg Queen Esther for his life, since he saw that the king had decided on his doom. When the king returned from the garden of the palace to the banquet hall, Haman had thrown himself on the couch on which Esther was reclining, and the king exclaimed, Will he also violate the queen while she is with me in my own house? Scarcely had the king spoken when the face of Haman was covered over. Harbona, one of the eunuchs who attended the king, said, At the house of Haman stands a gibbet fifty cubits high. Haman prepared it for Mordecai, who gave the report that benefited the king. The king answered, Hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gibbet, which he had made ready for Mordecai, and the anger of the king abated. Israel cried out to the Lord, and the Lord saved his people. He delivered him from all evil and worked great wonders among the nations. Proclaim this with shouts of joy. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. He delivered him from all evil and worked great wonders among the nations. A reading from a letter to Proba by St. Augustine, Bishop. You may still want to ask why the Apostle said, We do not know what is right to pray for, because surely we cannot believe that either he or those to whom he wrote did not know the Lord's Prayer. He showed that he himself shared this uncertainty. Did he know what it was right to pray for when he was given a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to bruise him, so that he might not be puffed up by the greatness of what was revealed to him? Three times he asked the Lord to take it away from him, which showed that he did not know what he should ask for in prayer. At last he heard the Lord's answer, explaining why the prayer of so great a man was not granted and why it was not expedient for it to be granted. My grace is sufficient for you, for power shines forth more perfectly in weakness. In the kind of affliction, then, which can bring either good or ill, we do not know what it, what it is right to pray for. Yet, because it is difficult, troublesome, and against the grain for us, weak as we are, we do what every human would do. We pray that it may be taken away from us. We owe, however, at least this much in our duty to God. If he does not take it away, we must not imagine that we are being forgotten by him, but because of our loving endurance of evil, must await greater blessings in its place. In this way, power shines forth more perfectly in weakness. These words are written to prevent us from having too great an opinion of ourselves if our prayer is granted. When we are impatient in asking for something, that it would be better not to receive and to prevent us from being dejected and distrustful of God's mercy toward us if our prayer is not granted. When we ask for something that would bring us greater affliction or completely ruin us through the corrupting inf influence of prosperity. In these cases, we do not know what it is right to ask for in prayer. Therefore, if something happens that we did not pray for, we must have no doubt at all that what God wants is more expedient than what we wanted ourselves. Our great mediator gave us an example of this. After he had said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup be taken away from me, he immediately added, Yet not what I will, but what you will, Father. So transforming the human will that was his through his taking a human nature. As a consequence, and rightly so, through the obedience of one man, the many are made righteous. Ask and it will be given to you, for whoever asks will receive, whoever seeks will find, whoever knocks, the door will be, will be opened to him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him in truth, for whoever asks will receive, whoever seeks will find, whoever knocks, the door will be opened to him. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, our source of power and inspiration, Give us strength and joy in serving you as followers of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks.